Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques. And today we're going to talk about how to fix an overly pointy bust on a wedding gown. I know everyone's body shape is a little bit different, but let's keep in mind that this dress form that this gown is on is proportioned. So the hip is equivalent to the bust circumference. Look at how tight this dress is on the hips, and yet it's not even touching the inside of her dress in the bust area. So the bust is definitely more pointy than need be when you look at the proportions with this gown. This is actually a super common problem that we see right now. Brides are standing in the mirror, looking down, looking at their reflection, and they're saying, this is not me. This is not what I look like. I don't feel comfortable in this. This is bordering on embarrassing. Can you please make this shaped more naturally for me? The answer to that question is yes, and I'm going to show you how to take it from this ultra pointy, um, very strong like ridge created with the boning to this softer angle that looks so much more natural, so much more flattering. It's not as hard as you would think. Let's do it step by step together. I'm just cutting these shells away so we can see uh, the, the lining of this dress, the kind of structure we're dealing with. We have the silicone elastic along the top edge. Here is the bust angle that you can tell is very, very perky. Um, I am going to start off with changing my needle. I want a fresh needle on here. Um, I put a size nine on there. And uh, definitely when you're dealing with a fabric like Mikado or a satin that can scar or pick easily, you're going to want to use a nice fresh needle. Now I've turned this inside out and I'm between the middle layers now and I'm kind of investigating the shape of each of these pattern pieces that were sewn together to create this dress. Now I want you to look at the shape of this middle piece and how it wings out at the bust area. Bodices are not always cut this way. There's a lot of variation. Oftentimes we see this middle piece a little bit more straight and we see most of the curve occurring in those side panel pieces. But in this case, we can see there's quite a bit of winging out in the middle. As you can imagine, that contributes a lot to the shaping of the front of this dress. Now we need to assess this shape because it's gonna direct us not just for how we'll sew this dress, but as always, you guys know, I like to take a deep dive. I want you to understand my decision-making process. So when you get a dress that's just a little bit different, you'll know what to do. In a situation as pictured, I would say maybe bring it in uh, even amounts uh, when it comes to that center piece. Um, and then on the side pieces, I would bring it in an even amount at the top and bottom, but maybe bring down the apex of the bust just a little bit by taking it in a little bit more at that peak. Now, if we're looking at a piece like this that has a little more extreme curvature um, in that center panel, that center front panel, you may even sometimes get by with almost like a pinch See how these red stitch lines are where, where you would take it down an equivalent amount um, in the apex area of both of those pattern pieces. So the sketch on the right is showing you essentially how the stitching would look as you are laying these pieces together and putting them under the machine. Remember, don't get overwhelmed. I promise you, I'm going to show you this step by step and break it down to where it is so very simple. Also in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to prevent the wrinkling from coming up that sometimes occurs when you adjust a bodice. Here we go. Let's start with lifting this boning out of the way. Now we can either work uh, mostly from the top and feed our work through the top of the bodice, or we can work where we feed the excess fabric from our work through the waistline of the bodice. The top of this bodice is just a little bit more complicated than the waist area. So I prefer to feed out any of the excess fabric at the waistline area. So because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and lift off the boning starting at the waist and if I can, 
I would like to leave this boning kind of plugged in to the top of the bodice so that I don't have to reset that. Remember, there's silicone elastic uh, between the, the skin of the bride and the lining of the gown right along that top edge. There's also that um, under stitching, the edge stitching that we see. And there's multiple layers that are being joined together across the top of the bodice. And they're sewn just right. They look very neat. I don't want to disturb it. So I'm going to leave the boning plugged into the top for all of those reasons. Now, if it gets too annoying and I have a hard time maneuvering this dress under my machine because of the boning, I may sometimes have to go ahead and remove the whole strip while I'm making this adjustment. My next step is opening up this bodice. I am using a razor, but don't let that scare you. If you prefer a seam ripper, you do you. I just prefer a razor. So these are the seams that I'm going to open up to do this alteration. I'm switching out to my left cording slash invisible zipper foot. That is my favorite for getting these really accurate seams. And the way that I'm going to sew this, I'll show it to you in a moment. I'll, I'll open up the seams and let you see the shape, but it's kind of like this little overlay sketch that I have here. For the side of the center front panel, I used the original seam line. And then for the side panel, I just brought it in just a little bit to reduce that bust angle. Now I'm going to sew the exact same way for the other side and then uh, to save time instead of fully sewing this boning in I'm just going to tack the bottom of the stick of boning to the bottom part of that seam. I'm just making sure that it's going to lay flush and this is good enough for the bride to be able to have a try on and for us to see how it will do. In the end, when we know everything is correct, we will go back in and securely sew that down to the seam allowances on both sides. We are now moving on to the outer layer or what we call the shell layer of the dress. You're going to notice that for this segment, we're going to be focused a lot more on detail. So make sure you stick with me through this. We are not going to do this part the same way we did the lining. Um, so this is the part where how we sew this is going to determine whether or not the dress wrinkles on the outside. So these are the seams that I'm going to open up. If you remember this from earlier in the video, we're opening an extra seam when we work on this outer layer. We are opening it up at the waist and we're also opening these princess seams all the way from, you know, we were starting about an inch down from the top edge all the way down to the waist seam. So we have a lot of opening up to do and this really does matter. So I've sped this up for you so that you can see it and it won't take you a long time, but you don't miss a thing. Now everything is footloose and fancy free and I'm going to show you high contrast here how I am layering these together. So you can see on the bottom side how that apex angle is sticking out a little bit further and then on top that is that center panel that doesn't have nearly as much curve. I want you to see how I'm stacking them together and I also want you to notice how I am pulling on both pieces of fabric as I sew. When I'm sewing in this curve my fingers are very close to the presser foot. I am making sure that I'm kind of rotating and keeping that fabric in contact. No wiggle room allowed because my fingers are very close to the presser foot. Now look at how as I get in the straight stretch here, my fingers are further away from the presser foot. I'm allowing it to walk a little bit more naturally. That's going to be super important. Now, you'll notice I said walk. You will see that the center panel is now a little bit longer than that side panel. I don't want to force them to align because there was a little bit uh, less distance to be traveled on that side panel now because we kind of took a shortcut around that apex. So this is to be expected that there'll be a little bit of extra fabric there at the bottom. 
Now, should that have occurred on the lining layer? Technically, yes, but those fabrics had a much looser weave. I was able to ease them in, and they're also not going to be seen if there's just a little bit um, of a pull going on. Whereas with this Mikado on the outer layer, if there's any type of pulling, we're going to get a wrinkle. All right, so this is just for demonstration purposes. I am now working on the next seam over, doing the same thing that I just did, okay? I'm starting at the top about an inch from that top of the seam, and I'm sewing down to what will eventually meet the waist seam. And I want you to notice something. I took out the same amount of the apex, but I want you to look at the bottom here, there's not as much difference in the leftover fabric. Remember on the first seam, that center panel was about a quarter of an inch longer. And now on the second seam, that side panel is about, I don't know, one sixteenth of an inch longer. So it has walked and what has caused it to walk is the feed dogs. We aren't sewing with a walking foot here. So whatever fabric is on top, that has a little bit of drag from the presser foot and whatever fabric is on the bottom, that's getting nudged through with the feed dogs. So the fabric, even though I'm trying to control it, you saw the amount of control I was having with my hands, the fabric on the bottom does still walk a little bit more than the fabric on the top. So it is important that when we sew, we make sure we keep the same pattern piece on the top or the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna show you how we fix that. I have ripped back open that demo seam so I can show you the right way to do it without getting those wrinkles. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the bottom part of this princess seam and we're going to align it just like it is on the other side. So if there's a quarter of an inch of that center panel um, hanging out a little further than that side panel, we're going to make sure that we have that happening on the other side as well. Now we're not going to sew from the top down and just put that tension on there and make sure it ends up in the right place because it's still going to walk. And on Mikado, let me tell you, Mikado will tell all your secrets. <laughs> So the lining layer on this dress is not going to tell all your secrets, but Mikado or a satin, it will. So I flipped this thing and we're going to start at the waist and we're going to work our way up. Just kind of easy does it for that straight stretch. And then when we get to this apex, we're going to match just what we did on the other side, making sure that we are kind of um, cutting out, so to speak, I know we're not using scissors, but we're cutting out that extra apex angle that we don't need. Now watch the technique that I'm using with my fingers here. You guys sometimes see me use this. It's uh, I'm pulling with my fingers and I'm making sure everything stays flat, kind of like we're using an embroidery hoop. That's gonna be super important here. You can see there is not a pucker at that seam line and that's where it really matters. Look how smooth that is, no pucker at all. We don't want any signs of walking on either side. I'm very happy with how smooth that looks. Now I'm also going to show you with a sketch the order and the direction that I sewed these seams in because that is what really makes the difference um, in whether or not you get wrinkles. So as you can see that center panel is going to have that little quarter of an inch or so overhang. You can see it there and that's just fine. Here's the sketch. Lining layer, we opened up the princess seams and we started where it says number one, it's the right side and we sewed down from the top of the bodice to the waist. Two is the left side from the top of the bodice to the waist. And then when we went to do the shell layer or the outer layer, we separated at the princess seams and that waist seam 
and we started where the number three is there on the far right and we sewed down from the top of the bodice to the waist and then you can see the number four we made sure that the overhang was equivalent there at the waist seam the bottom part of the princess seam and we sewed up from the waist to the top of that princess seam. So that's the order that we sewed these in. And yes, we have a little bit of leftover fabric in the center front on the shell layer, and that's just fine. Now let's sew this waist seam back, and you'll see what I mean. This is just so much easier to put this back than to reconstruct the whole top of the bodice. Now you can see that that boning is still loose. Uh, we have not had the try on yet um, at this point with the bride. Uh, so again, we're going to sew that boning down after the try on, but I want you to see that just with the sewing techniques, this is with zero pressing, zero steaming. I want you to see how we really don't have a lot of wrinkling. I'll tell you where we are at here. Um, the, the dress is actually still a little bit loose at the waist. We have it clamped in the back. That's why it seems flush along the top, but it, it's really not snatching underneath her bust. So uh, the boning is not sewn in yet. We haven't cut out that excess uh, fabric from where we brought in the apex. There's no shell in here. It has not been pressed. Um, it certainly has not been worked on, you know, with a ham to make sure that everything is equivalent and, and shaped appropriately. So there's still a lot of work to be done here to make this look very nice. Uh, but you will notice that you still don't have those horizontal wrinkles going down the front of the gown like we often are challenged with with this type of dress. And the reason why it's not there is because the order and the direction that it was sewn. I hope this has helped you. YouTube knows that you will love this next video.